Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to disassemble and replace the shock on a strut assembly. Don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com and subscribe to my social media pages such as Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links are all included in the description below. For this, I'm using the rear strut off a 1997 BMW 540i as an example. As you can see, here is the strut assembly. The shock will be getting replaced as the mounting point is cracked. For this, we will need a special tool in order to disassemble the strut. I am using a spring compressor. I would recommend only purchasing a quality made tool as some no name or economy brands have poor quality control so the tool can fail during operation which can result in an injury. The one I have is made by Bluepoint and comes in a kit. Instead of purchasing, some auto parts stores will in fact rent or loan tools as well. A wall mounted unit is technically the safest to own, but not everyone has a room and they can be quite expensive to purchase. First we must start with ensuring the threaded rods are well oiled. They normally call for heavy oil. I use the same heavy weight oil that's used on my lathe, something like what is used in a differential. First insert the washer on the threaded rod to the hex head side. This will prevent binding between the materials and marring. There is two types of jaws included in the kit. One is non-threaded, so it's smooth in the inside as you can see. Then we have the threaded version, which installs last on the threaded rod. First insert the non-threaded jaw. These only work on one way. The spring needs to be compressed, so the depressed portions of the jaws will face each other. Then install a threaded jaw and at least two inches of threaded rod should be exposed before going into compression on the outside just as a safety. This will ensure we have full thread contact and if the thread portion was to fail hopefully there is enough material to grab without fully letting go. Due to the thicker jaw profile these can be a little trickier to work with on a more compact strut design. As you can see, we will have to overcome the tighter clearances between the coil spring and closed components. This particular compressor has retaining pins to hold everything in place and it's certainly a nice feature to have so nothing slips out of place. Pull the pins back before putting the jaws into place. While still maintaining the 2 inch safety with the threads, we want to try to compress the spring at the furthest points. The larger area you pick to compress, the less strain it is on the compressor and also the spring. If you need to compress the spring, say one inch, over two coils, that's a half inch each. If you were to compress eight coils instead, only an eighth of an inch is required for movement of each coil. So there is significantly less movement. Now insert the other pair of jaws. The pair of jaws must be directly across from each other, otherwise they won't compress the spring evenly. Engage a safety pin so the jaws won't pop out of their location. Once everything is in place and snugged up, just to give you a close up, as you can see the jaws are tucked around the coils of the spring and the safety pin is engaged. They are directly across from each other and they're grabbing as much of the coil as possible. Now use the appropriate size socket and compress the spring. Try to be as even as possible between the two compressors. Once the spring tension has been removed on the strut assembly, you will notice the shock becomes somewhat loose and easily movable. You'll want about a quarter inch of movement. It's enough to know the spring tension has been removed, but not too much where you're putting too much strain on the tool. Give it one final tighten. In order to remove the upper spring seat, it's held on with a retaining nut on the center, which is connected to the shock shaft. Technically, you can use a couple wrenches for the disassembly. One to hold the shock shaft in place from spinning and the other to remove the nut. Instead, I'm using an impact wrench which normally has enough force to spin the nut off. But sometimes the shaft will spin so use pliers to hold the shaft. Never remove this nut while the spring is under tension on the strut assembly. You can get severely hurt if you do. If you are keeping the strut, do not use pliers as this can damage the plated surface which will eventually create a seal failure, requiring a strut replacement eventually. You can slightly loosen the nut and you'll notice some play in the upper spring seat assembly or at least a space between the nut and the seat assembly. Here is the nut once removed. The new shock will come with a new locking nut. In this scenario, this uses a nylock nut. 
Remove the retaining cap, then remove the upper spring seat. Unfortunately, the bump stop is still stuck in place due to the spring compression tool, so they'll need to be loosened first and removed. Once the clamps have been removed, pull out the assembly, pair up the old and new shocks, ensure they are the same. As you can see, I've already put paint marks at the start so everything can be lined up and it makes for easy installation. These can be slightly rotated if minor adjustments are required once everything is back together. If any parts are damaged or worn, replace them as needed. First installing the rubber spring pad. Next is the bump stop. This can go on before or after the coil spring, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have enough clearance within the coil spring. Now the coil spring. The upper spring pad. The spring pads will sit in certain positions where the coil ends. Reinstall a spring compressor in the same procedure as before. Compress the spring until you can get the retaining cap and have enough threads to screw on the nut with full thread contact. I normally like to install the nut as a form of safety. Continue to compress the spring, then tighten the nut accordingly. As you can see, I'm able to use the impact wrench to tighten the nut this time around as the shock is new. So there is more resistance so the shock shaft doesn't spin as easily. Ensure everything is lined up and seated correctly, then remove the spring compressor evenly. Now the strut assembly can be reinstalled back on your vehicle. New videos are released every Monday and Friday, so be sure to stay up to date with my video schedule by hitting that notification bell on my channel homepage. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of my tutorial. Thank you for watching.